All right, eighth grade. So I'm going to be honest with you here because I've never been anything other than that. This is going to be very difficult to do in a video lesson. By this, I am referring to word problems. It would be far more ideal if we were sitting in a class together and going through these word problems and giving them the time and attention that they deserve and having some really good quality interaction and questions from you guys. And But you know what? This is the hand we've been dealt, so we're gonna make the best of it and we're gonna do the best we can because that's all we can ever do is the best we can. So this last section here in chapter five, all about systems and word problems, okay? We're gonna read through example one here, then we will read through through uh, example two on the next page, and then we will try and go through two quick check problems together, and I'll give you maybe two of them to work on uh, for the week. Example one says, taxi company A charges a flat fee of $8.50 plus $2 per mile traveled, and taxi company B charges a flat fee of $5.50 plus $4 per mile. So what we've got here is two different taxi companies charging two different rates. This one is a little bit more upfront, but less per mile, and this company is a little less upfront, but more per mile. So it wants to know when would it be better to hire company A versus company B and explain your reasoning. Well, the way you are going to answer this question is by figuring out when will they cost the same, all right? When will they cost the same? So obviously with word problems, we always want to write a let statement. What are the unknowns in this problem? Well, the first unknown is how many miles you're going to be traveling. Because how much your total charge is going to be, no matter which taxi company you choose, it's gonna depend on how far you drive. So that's why they have here, let X equal the number of miles traveled. The other unknown here then is the number you heard me just met reference a moment ago, whatever that total charge is gonna be. So they have let Y equal the total charge. So our two unknowns in this problem are, how far are we going? and what's the total charge gonna be for going that far. So here in red and blue are the two systems for each company here, all right? In blue is company A, the 850 plus $2 per mile. Total charge will equal 850 plus $2 per mile. In red here is company B, the 550 plus $4 per mile. Y equals 550 plus $4 per mile. Per mile. Now, once you get here, once you get to the system, you've read the problem, you've written your let statement, and now you have your system. With word problems, you have a choice to solve the system using whatever method you want. And if I just show you up here in green, maybe you want to pause this, copy this down for your notes, whatever you want to do here but it has methods for solving systems. And it has the three we learned, graphing, which we did together when we were still in school. Then we have substitution, which we also did together. And then elimination is the one we've done with the video lessons. So three methods. When do you wanna use them? Well, it really depends. For graphing, when you wanna look at a visual, sometimes people are visual, they like to see it. When you wanna estimate a solution, sometimes graphing can be helpful. Substitution, when one equation is solved for one of the variables, it would be easy. Elimination, if you've got equal coefficients, maybe that's the way you'd wanna go. So really, you've gotta make a call. And I know that a lot of students don't like that, okay? I've been teaching long enough to know that students don't always enjoy the freedom to um, make a decision. They like to be told step one, step two, step three, do it this way every single time, it works this way every single time. But unfortunately, that's not the real world, that's not real life. Once you get here, you can solve this system however you want, unless it specifically asks you to graph or whatever. If they are not specific about how to solve it, you choose the method. Now you can see here that they go ahead and they say graph both equations and you'd see this is where they intersect. I probably would not choose to graph. Now this one I might because looking at you know, the one total cost graph versus the other total cost graph. You know, you're gonna have two different lines. If I have another pen here in the office, I can show you. So one of them is gonna go like this on your graph. One of them is gonna go like that on your graph. As you recall from, right, this is your solution right there where they intersect. You remember that. So maybe you'd wanna graph these 
but I'm thinking I probably would have used substitution to solve this system. But nonetheless, they will cost the same for one and a half miles traveled, and that cost will be 11.50. So company A, company B, if you were only going a mile and a half, it wouldn't matter which one you chose, you would pay the 11.50 for both of them. That wasn't the question though. The question was, when would it be high, better to hire A versus B? That's gonna come from the details of each one. Which one has the steeper slope? Well, four is bigger than two. Remember, the slope is the number in front of X, MX, right? That's steeper. So after the point of intersection, this one's gonna be going up faster. So that's why it says less than one and a half, company B is cheaper, but after that one and a half, company B is gonna be going up really fast because of the big slope, whereas company A will not be. A would be cheaper, so one and a half miles. Less than one and a half, you want B. Greater than one and a half, you want A. And that's where the graph would come in handy here to answer this kind of specific question. So here is example two, let's read. Matthew has 80 coins. So they're telling you he's got 80 coins and he only has two types of coins nickels and dimes. The value of the coins is 675. Write and solve a system of equations to determine how many each he has. How many nickels does he have? How many dimes does he have? So there's two pieces of information they gave you. He's got 80 total and he's got $6.75 total. 80 coins, 675. You need your let statement. What are the two things you don't know here? Well, that's pretty obvious. You don't know how many nickels Matthew has and you don't know how many dimes he has. Always start your word problems with the let statement. Let n equal number of nickels and let d equal number of coins. Not value of nickels, but how many of them he has. The number of nickels. What are our two equations gonna be? We know that n plus d is 80. He's got 80 total coins. However many nickels plus however many dimes is 80. Nickels plus dimes 80 coins, that's the first equation. The second equation here comes from the value of each of these coins. And you gotta be very careful here. A nickel is five cents. As a decimal folks, that's 0 .05. I can't tell you how many times I would see students here write five N, that would be $5. 0 .05 is five cents. 0 .05 times however many nickels plus 10 cents for a dime, that's 0 0.10, is gonna equal the 675 they told us he had. So the value of a nickel times however many of those plus the value of a dime times however many of those is the total value of Matthew's coin. Elimination here. It would be possible, but you would need a pregame step. And with decimals, you guys probably wouldn't like that. It's not terrible, it can be done, but I'm thinking probably not. Substitution, however, here also requires a pregame step, but it's not a very bad pregame step. Look what they did here. They took their n plus d equaling 80 equation, subtracted d from both sides, minus d goes away, minus d, and now they have this. n equals 80 minus d, solved for n, substituted in. This is where, I don't want to write in the book, but this is where we would circle this and we would go plug it in right there for n in our other equation. And you can see they have that right here and they even color coordinated it, all right? There's the n that we are substituting 80 minus d for and they did it in red. So 0.05 n 80 minus d plus 0.1 d equals 675. How do we handle this? Distributive property, calculator, 0 0.05 times 80 on your calculator will be four. 0 0.05 times D is negative 0 0.05 D. Now they combine like terms. Negative five cents plus 10 cents. Negative five cents plus 10 cents is positive five cents D. They moved this four over here, still have the 675 on the other side. Subtract the four, subtract the four, 0 0.05 D equals 275, six minus four is 275. On your calculator, divide by 0 0.05, divide by 0 0.05, and you will get that D equals 55. We just figured out how many dimes he has, 55 dimes. Well, nickels plus dimes equals 80, subtract 55 from both sides, and you've got 25 nickels. We are finished. Matthew has 25 nickels and 55 dimes.
Example one, Alexa is trying to decide between two hotels. Hotel A, 80 per night. Hotel B, 70 per night, plus a parking fee of $20. Which hotel should Alexa choose? This is just like the taxi problem. What are our unknowns in this problem? What's gonna determine how much your total charge here is at either hotel? It's going to be how many nights. Let X equal number of nights, N-I-G-H-T-S, that you're gonna stay at the hotel. Now, what's the other variable? Well, obviously the other variable is your total charge, how much you're going to pay. So we've got hotel A and hotel B. We have to write a total charge equation for each hotel. The total charge at A, well, the only thing you're paying at A is $80 per night. $80 per night. Now, at Hotel B, what your total charge is gonna be is the $70 per night plus $20 to park your car. You didn't have that at A. A was just 80 a night. B was 70 a night, so a little cheaper, but 20 bucks to park your car. How will we determine which hotel we would want to stay at. Well, we could graph them. I'm not gonna do that. I am going to just simply substitute. We are ready to substitute. I'm going to take what Y equals and I'm going to substitute it in for Y right there and we're gonna be on our way. So 80X equals 70X plus 20. Track 70X from both sides. 10X equals 20. Divide by the 10 on both sides. Two nights. If you stayed two, oops, there you go. If you stayed two nights, the cost would be the same. Now, what would that cost be? Well, let's go plug that two over here. What's 80 times two? It would be $160. So 2160 is not your answer to this problem, but 2160 is the break even point. Two nights, it doesn't matter which hotel you stay at. A or B, doesn't matter. Two nights, you're paying 160 at both of them. When would you want to choose one or the other? Well, it's all a matter of are you going to stay less than two nights? or more than two nights. Less than two nights, which one's gonna be cheaper? This one is gonna be cheaper, all right? Less than two nights means what? It means one night, okay? That's what that means. One night, you're gonna pay 80 bucks here. One night here, you're gonna pay 90 bucks, 70 plus 20. So one night, this guy is cheaper. Two nights is the same, more than two nights, now you're gonna wanna stay at Hotel B. And that's the answer to this problem, less, then two nights, A is cheaper. More than two nights, B is cheaper. And that would be your answer to this problem right here. And exactly two nights is the same. You don't need to say that. That's in your work. It's, in, it's, it's implied by our, our work here. There you go. Example two here. Alyssa has a collection of 35 character figures. This is just like the coins. Total of 80 coins in the example problem. Total of 35 figures here in this problem. It says some are 10 bucks and some are 25 bucks. Total value of her figures is 575. Write and solve a system to find out how many of each she has. Let X equal number of... $10 figures, let Y equal number of $25 figures. And really in this problem, this is interchangeable. It doesn't matter which variable you call. You could have said Y was the 10s and X was the 25s. That doesn't matter. All right, it would all shake out at the end. So now what are the equations we're going to write? Well, we know how many figures she has. X plus Y is 35 figures. And we know the total value. So $10 times X plus $25 times Y equals $575. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do elimination on this one because there's no decimals this time. So why the heck not? I have a 10X here and I have an X here. Can I just multiply by 10 to turn it into a 10? So I'm going to multiply this entire equation by 10. I'm gonna get 10X plus 10Y equals 350. I'm gonna go rewrite that over here. 10X plus 10Y equals 350. How do I eliminate when they're the same sign? Positive 10, positive 10. You eliminate by subtracting. 
10x minus 10x is gone. 25 minus 10 is 15 y's. 575 minus 350 is 225. Divide by 15, divide by 15, and y equals 15. We also know that x plus y equals 35. Subtract the 15 and x equals 20. Our final answer here, sorry, I went off the page there, but our final answer here is that Alyssa has 20 $10 figures, F-I-G-U-R-E-S, 15 $25 figures. And that's your final so again, I'll end the video the same way I started the video. This ain't the best way to do this. We should definitely be, you know, in class for this kind of thing. But uh, it is imperative that I show you and you practice this. You know, even if you're not getting these right, don't sweat it. The thing that's important is that the work is getting done, not that it's correct. That you're thinking through these steps, writing let statements, creating your equations, deciding how to solve. If you mess up on any of these things, that's not a terrible thing. You know, we can work on that just as long as you're practicing. So have a good week and see you later. Peace out. So they can make it easier.